The Congressional Black Caucus met with FBI Director Christopher Wray to discuss the agency's response to nationwide protests and social injustice in America in the wake of the killing of George Floyd. Joining us now, member of the House Committee on Oversight and Reform who led the conversation, Democratic Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett. She represents the United States Virgin Islands. Congresswoman, it's great to have you with us this morning. I want to ask you all about your conversation with Director Ray in just a moment. But first, on that broad legislation put out yesterday by Democrats in the House and signed on by Democrats in the Senate, to reform policing in this country. Do you believe it touches on all the areas that need to be touched on? Well, I think the Congressional Black Caucus, along with Democratic leadership, looked at a range of legislation that members of Congress have been working on for a number of years to try and be laser focused on police brutality, to try and be focused on changing and fixing federal law, which was protecting and acting as a shield against those individuals who had righteous claims against police officers in other cases. So I think in the area of police brutality, we have touched on those things that are important. Also uh, re related to a national database. This is the beginning and a discussion of the systematic racism in this country, which needs to be absolutely dismantled at its root. But we know that that's going to take even more work and that's not just a legislative fix. There are things that needs to go on in the hearts and minds and in the social aspects of this country as well. We know, of course, that the Senate Congresswoman is led by Republicans, and that's been a difficult road to hoe for Democrats in the House trying to get legislation through. But do you believe in this moment with such broad support in this country for the protesters, for the movement we see in the streets, that some of these ideas that you all have put forward in the House actually this time may make it through the Republican-controlled Senate? Well, I think with all of us working together, with the number of individuals out in the streets in this country demanding that justice be done, that that's a voice that uh, Mitch McConnell cannot uh, dispute and cannot um, hold back from. And that's what we're looking for, to, for individuals to go to each one of their senators, Republicans and Democrats, asking them to sign on and that they want to see that bill on the floor. Willie, as you can remember, our young people went out in the street several years ago to ask for gun control legislation. The House, led by uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi, passed that bill, and that's still languishing uh, in the graveyard that Mitch McConnell has put forward as the Grim Reaper. I want to ask you about your recent conversation, Congresswoman, with FBI Director Christopher Wray. Uh, what did you seek from him? Why did you want to meet with him? What do you feel like he can do to influence this conversation? I've noticed there's been a lot of reporting over the last week or so that he has tried to, in his own way, sort of distance himself from the position of Attorney General William Barr. Director Wray saying the protectors can quickly become the oppressors, particularly for people of color in terms of putting his own FBI people out in the street to quell these protests. What was that conversation like? Well, you know, as someone who worked at the Justice Department, uh, working for Larry Thompson, um, Chris Ray was my chief of staff when I was senior counsel in that, uh, in that group. And then knowing that he was going over to the FBI, um, one of the things I was concerned about is Attorney, Jar, uh, Attorney Barr having dismantled uh, the work of the criminal division um, and using U.S. attorney's offices as one-offs for his own investigations. And so uh, I reached out to Director Ray and to his staff um, to talk with them about what were they doing, what were they seeing, uh, to make sure that they were protecting individuals who were utilizing their constitutional right to protest, and also to question him about investigations that were going on. I was struck particularly by the discussion about uh, the national database which to date is voluntary for police departments to bring in information and to give information about misconduct, about police brutality. And we were able to find out that only 40 percent of police departments in this country um, give information in that database. So part of the bill mm -hmm. that we put forward uh, by the Congressional Black Caucus is to make that mandatory, to ensure that police officers cannot go from one um, jurisdiction to another um, after being bad actors in one area and then going to terrorize individuals and communities, families, black boys, black men in others. Um, I also want to say, Willie, that Mike I also Barnacles found very here interesting. has a question for you. Excuse me. Go okay. ahead. 
Uh, I also wanted to say one of the things you mentioned, uh, a quote from Chris Ray. I was struck by another quote that he had in which he said that the protesters were engaged in a righteous, important cause. Um, and I think that's how he mm. set the discussion when we began. Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Congresswoman. We've got a bit of a delay here, but Mike Barnacle has a question for you. Congresswoman, uh, yesterday, uh, the bill to redefine policing in the United States was introduced in the House, and tomorrow there's going to be an extensive hearing on it. If you talk to a lot of cops, many, many cops, <clears throat> they will tell you that one of the things about their job that exasperates them is the social work aspect of it. They feel they're out on the streets to preserve order and to provide law. Uh, sometimes that has gone astray. We know that. But in order to reduce the social work aspect of the job, will the hearings focus on things like homelessness, drug addiction, the mental health issues that many police officers deal with each and every day? Is there a way that we can find, do you think, to separate those from actual active police work? Well, first, let me say, as the granddaughter and then the daughter of a police officer, my father served on the New York Police Department for 30 years. We all know that many police officers have to engage in things that go beyond the scope of just acting as um, in, in the protection area. They are engaged in service, and this is a community function, and I think there are plenty of police officers who do enjoy that. Um, but I do believe that the hearings will not only focus on that, but I think that you are going to see throughout this country um, many individuals and many mayors, governors, hopefully begin to move some resources over to the social services aspect in their uh, jurisdictions, because the militarization of our police department and the continual ramping up of weaponry without training along with the services the, uh, the communities need, is something that I think exacerbates uh, some of the things that we're being seeing, the, the deadly forces being used, the excessive force that's being used throughout this country. Congresswoman Eugene Robinson of The Washington Post has a question for you. Gene? Uh, Congresswoman, uh, I, I know Democrats have the votes in the House to, to pass the legislation that was unveiled yesterday. Uh, but have you seen any um, anything from your Republican counterparts to indicate they're willing to even engage in this process, that, that some might be willing to support the legislation, or are they uh, still on the sidewalk? Um, I think when you know members of Congress and have conversations with them, you can begin to have those conversations um, that would cause them uh, to begin to move towards supporting legislation that they know, many of them know, is necessary. Unfortunately, Eugene, one of the things that we have to remember is that we as members of Congress are not physically there during this pandemic. And so the kinds of discussion, the kinds of negotiation that would take place between members and members is going to be more difficult. And for that, we're once again also calling on the American people. In your protest, remembering to go, this is a call of action to all people, to go and talk to your members of Congress, to demand that they co-sponsor this bill, to demand that they vote yes on it, and as well going to the senators in your state to press them to be a part of this movement to dismantle racism in this country. Congresswoman, as we continue around the horn, Eddie Gloud has a question for you. Eddie. Representative Plaskett, I just wanted to ask two quick questions. One, we want to do a checkup on St. Thomas and the Virgin Islands after the hurricane. How, how are you guys doing? And then two, do you actually think uh, that we are at this inflection point that we can change the very nature of policing in this country? Hmm. I think we're at a point where the American people are not going to allow us to do anything less. And we see that we have not abated in the number of protests that Americans have been engaged in, letting democracy be heard, that uh, Americans are tired of this. All Americans are tired. I'm really surprised that the range of Americans, not just young, old people as well, our elders, seniors, white, black, support the notion that there needs to be change in our police system. And first, I want to thank you for your work. Um, and thank you for checking up on the people of the Virgin Islands. Uh, I think this is another example of systemic racism in this country. 
uh, that the individuals, the families and individuals in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands still have not seen so much of the funding that we should have received from the hurricanes. Um, we have not begun the rebuilding of our schools that were decimated. We've not begun the building of our hurricanes. I want people to remember that the Virgin Islands, four million people that live in the territories, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, Guam, the other territories, do not have the ability to vote for the commander in chief, even though we serve in more numbers per capita than many of the most all of the states, actually. Um, it's that systemic racism that during the insular cases in the 1900s said the people inhabitants of the territories are alien races that cannot understand Anglo-Saxon principles of law and therefore should not have the privilege of being able to vote for president nor having a full voice in this Congress. Those are the things that we're fighting for, the systemic racism that occurs throughout this country that needs to be dismantled. Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett of the United States Virgin Islands, to echo Eddie, we're sending our best to your constituents and all the people down there. We really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you so much. Thank and so coming much. up this morning on Morning Joe, medical experts are sounding the alarm over the spread of coronavirus as the United States ramps up its reopening. We're coming right back. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.